time. Oh, there we go. So, when you can, try and make him an active participant. I know, one one between the cracks. So, for... <clears throat> for bathing times... Give him a treat just in the wash station, standing there, going in and out of it. Make him be able to, in the future, just run up into it and be actively helping you with the bath rather than, you know, kicking and screaming. Ultimately, you also want to make sure the water is nice and warm. So just turning on the water, having it run near him, but not... Oh, you running away already? Over here, this way. Having the water run, but not on him while he's getting fed. This way, there's more. Oh, you naughty boy. There's more, there's more. There's more. Four arms, right? Okay. Then you we'll utilize one of these. Come on, come on. Ooh. Ooh, baby boy. Hold on. Okay. Some of this dirt off of him. You got helpers, one person feeds while the other person bathes. If you're doing this by yourself, you put some peanut butter on the wall or just take little breaks in between to uh, like have a bowl next to you and feed him, take a little break. doing so good. It's cold water even. I'm doing so good. So well. Get some of the mud off of you. Just a spot. Just like a spot clean. Buddy. Just a spot clean. Just a spot clean. I saw how they tank a little deal right in the mud. Any other spots? So well, look at you. Sit. Oh. I'm not sure with this. So just feed them as much as you can throughout the process, and later on it'll just be a treat at the end of the process. Alright. Free. You can come back down now. Such a smart little dude. Where'd you go? Time for your lesson. Yes. <laughs> Let me just set up a little stool for you. Look at this attentive student. It's pitter patter. Mm -hmm. That's another thing you can do with him too. Just practice those.
practice this, we might have to work on Duncan too. Take a couple of steps. I saw how he was almost going to jump. Take a couple of steps. Have him approach you and start doing automatic sits. You can feed him his whole dinner like this. Okay, we gotta release Duncan and he's going to lose his mind. Once he knows... Oh boy. I dropped the treat right here. I gotta know it's mine now. Why are you barking at me? There you go, and if he offers downs, even better. You can then start to ask him for sits or downs. Let's see. There, come. Down. Don't look him in the eyes, look at the ground. Down. You can then point to it. So he's better with the hand gesture than he is the vocalization. But if you do them constantly in a row, down, he'll start doing that. So just you moving gets him to stand up to be able to perform a sit or a down or anything else. You can also incorporate stay on and off the bed. Stay. Ready to take a couple of steps. I can see that. Okay, we gotta take care of him. Might as well do it right now. There. Over here. Down. Down. Look at the ground or his paws, not at his eyes. And just <coughs> be patient. And don't repeat yourself over and over and over. He has a chance to earn a treat if he does it on the first go. If he doesn't, not getting it is the punisher. So that he will listen more attentively. Down. There we go. So we want to just be patient. Down. Down. Then I'll say the word and then follow it up with the hand gesture. So, word first, down, then hand gesture. You can hold the hand gesture down. <laughs> and then the other hand comes in with the treats. So we moved away from using food in our hand to get him to do things, to now just using our hands without anything to see if he'll sit up. What is this nonsense? What is this cute nonsense? Okay, you get some treats for being too cute. Too cute. Class clown. Bear, come here. Touch. 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 That'll be a go one, something fun and easy. Touch. Nose bob to the hand. Touch. 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 
try and only mouth click the touches with the nose and not the open mouth. Touch. 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 What are you gonna do with all this cuteness, my boy? Okay, so what are we working on? Are we working on paws? Are we working on booping your nose? Just giving you a couple of homework assignments. First, just a couple of drills of following you and going into sits. Sit. Sometimes using your voice only. Sometimes you can use the hand gesture as well. Sit. Move to ask him to come along with you. Bear. Sit. Do those for like, you know, one to five minutes. Then switch it up and just work on downs. Bear. Down. Food in my hand this time. Because we're just switching it up. This time there will be no food. <laughs> Where are you going? Down. Don't look in his eyes, look at the ground. Now it's going to be the word and the hand gesture. Down. If you're patient, he may give it to you. I was giving him a chance. Down. Other hand comes in with the food. If you don't say stay, he can come along with you. Let's go. Bear. Down. So just saying the word might be a little too soon, so we keep him printing the word by saying it first. Down. Then following it with the hand gesture. We do not overlap the word with the hand gesture. We say that more difficult, the one that he's working on first, and then the one he, he knows gets followed up with. So the one that he doesn't know as well is the verbalization, the one that he knows very well is the hand gesture. So we say, down, and then go on the tree. Stay. What do you think you're up to? Any clock after that? No. <laughs> Come here. Down. Because he broke the stay. Stay. I'll do an easier one. Oh. Okay, well let me take care of this guy. Down. Stay. So you've done more stays on the bed, so he's more proficient on the bed than he is just. And two, you know, we ask him to follow us along with the sits now with a little bit of the downs. So he's a little confused. Why wouldn't that puppy brain be? So, let's take it back a notch. Bed. Yeah. I don't know what this one is. If he's off the bed, feed him where you want him to be. Completely on the bed. Incorporate the stay. Stay. Walk away from him. If he breaks, that's a failed session. Bring him back. You found the other treats. How dare you? He already knows this dance move. Stay. 
Oh, so close. Stay. <laughs> just turning it. Can't even get away with just turning, huh? Okay, we gotta warm you up. Stay. Pitter patter the feet. Warm him up. Stay. Pitter patter turns into a couple of steps. Then stay turns into maybe where you left off the other day. So this is what I mean about warming up. You may not be able to jump right back into, let's say, step six of where of your process. Stay. You may have to just warm him up and remind him what step two, three, four, five, six are. And then he'll be better. I'll be back in gear. Stay of not following you around like the sit exercise. Do you think that one works too? Just a bit closer to me? Bear, over here, can you, I wonder, can that be seen? Yeah, pretty cute. We gotta go to this one. There we go. Down. You see now how he's readjusting his body. Be more on the bed. It's just about consistency. Stay. So practice putting repetition into your known behaviors. Sit down, stay, going to his bed. Put these into a routine, stay, start to add minor distractions, and if he doesn't go after those minor distractions, he gets a reward for that, stay. It's okay to interact with the distraction, but the interaction should not be rewarding. It should be neutral. So if you drop a ball and he goes after it, you should grab that ball before he does because if he grabs the ball, it would be rewarding. But for him to smell something, it's okay, but if you were to grab that and run around with it, then that's rewarding, right? It's a fun part of it. So, distractions are not fun, they're boring. So don't get distracted by distractions. Keep working. And good things. Ooh, who's faster? Who's gonna be faster? So close. But he needs these mistakes to understand that stay, that going after them. Ooh, I'm faster. I'm always gonna be faster. Down. Stay. So those two at the beginning failed attempts creates a success. Stay. <laughs> I'm just going to grab it before it falls to the ground. So failures are not just failures, they are learning opportunities.
I don't want you to consider, oh, he didn't get it, as a, oh, no, I'm not doing well, he's not doing well. It's, he didn't get it, I hope he learns from this experience of not getting it, so that he can get it a lot better later. Down. <laughs> this is Sai, you're just gonna say Sai. Now you're gonna give some lip. I don't care. I'll give Duncan some of your food. Okay, I'll go give Duncan some of your food. How'd you like them apples? Go to your bed. Down. Stay. Bed. Down. Stay. Stay. Now you're free, and now you're free to do whatever you want. So the next thing I wanted to show is how to get this little rascal to drop something when he has something that he's not supposed to have. And that would be offering him something that is equal or higher value than what he has. But first we gotta get him to put something in his mouth. You can do it with tug toys, you can create a distraction like something, but make sure you don't create a superstitious chain where like let's say you use socks or something and then he starts grabbing socks to make you tell him to drop it so that he can get the treat. Use the neutral stuff that I like to use are tissues, paper towels. If I can't get them to interact with it, sometimes I'll put a piece of kibble in it. Drop it. Just like that. It's like, uh oh, I just dropped something. Drop it. You bring the treat right up to the nose to entice him to drop this. Let's see if we can get it closer to the camera. Over here, buddy. Bear, over here. Drop it. So you say the word first, and then you bring this item right up to their nose. So then this word, drop it, means I got something better for you. Come find me. And you won't have to be right up to his nose. Right now, you're going to have to bring the treat right up to his nose. Later, you'll try to just offer him a treat over here. He's saying drop it, and offering him something so that he comes up to you and maybe drops the item over there, or brings you the item. But since he's a baby, babies need baby steps. Drop it. Right by the nose. Maybe move his face away from the item. And give him, sometimes you can also sprinkle some treats on the ground to give you enough time to Grab that item from the ground. There, drop it. There. Drop a couple of treats on the ground. Gives you enough time to go and pick up the things that you need. The things that he's naughty with. So a couple of drills to practice is practice with toys that he can have. You know, get him to start playing tug with something. Then when he has something in his mouth, drop it. 
and then he can say, Okay, ready? Take! Talk with it. Drop it. There you go. So do those a couple of times. Whenever you can. Do it when you're playing. Bear. Here. Touch. So him bopping your hand when you say touch. Saying the word first. Down. Then following it up with the hand. <laughs> Using your hands without food in them. Bear, sit up. Good boy. <laughs> Shake. Shake. Do you not know that one without the hand? Shake or paw. There you go. Paw. So you can see how quickly I moved without with not using food in that hand. Paw. Catch it and come in with the other. If you can get it in. To lay down, you get them also to start rolling over. You get them to go in one direction. You can then get him to go back the other direction. <laughs> there you go. There's another one too that if you can get him a treat right above his nose. So he lifts off from the back, the front paws and starts sitting on his butt. Right now you can just feed him right here. There you go. Right here. Sit. Just a little bit above. Not too high, otherwise he's going to try and jump for the treat. Just high enough that it's out of reach until he goes like, oh, a little bit higher. <laughs> Your butt made out of jello. There you go. Just reward that little lift off. Rewind if you didn't see it. Hopefully it was caught on the frame. But just even a little lift off. We'll get balancing on the butt, but right now we need him to lift off from the <laughs> lift off. That's a high five. Too cool. Come here, you lazy bones. Come here, Jello boy. Come here. There you go. Sit. Warm him up. Maybe just warm up. There you go. See how he lifted off? A little bit more. Just a lift off. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, practicing that, getting him to go into a, a sit. You see, too high and he was about to jump. And there you go. Just lift off from the... Get me that jello. What are those bones? That will get him to sit up on his butt later and do like a begging type of thing. He's still a bit of a baby, figuring out his paws. <laughs> you know, it's all right. You're not a baby. A young adolescent. Isn't that right? What else? You want the easy stuff? Bear. Just saying his name. You can also take a couple of treats. Bear. Get that turnaround. Take a treat, put it behind him. Bear. Once he's done eating that treat, 
say his name there. So he starts to look back at you. Bear. When he hears his name. That's how you teach him or train him a different name. Bear. Bear. Bear, come. This is also how you can practice coming when called by yourself in the house. Take a couple of treats, put them on the ground. Gives you enough time to walk away. Bear, come. Couple of treats on the ground. Gives you enough time to walk away. Bear, come. Couple of treats on the ground. Bear, come. See if you can get further and further away. <laughs> Sprinkle them on the ground a little bit further apart. Bear, come. You can also use just the word. Come. Yeah, how about in here? Come. So he learns both his name as well as come. You can also use this opportunity to teach him a whistle, a clap. Whatever you want him to respond to. Set your book me on. You take a little break and go play outside with your buddies. You did such a good job on the pocket. Thank you. Alright. First, we gotta give you the rest of your meal. You gotta give him some big jackpot at some point. Might as well give it to him for a behavior. Bed. So you're gonna give him a bone to, to chew on, his meal if you don't have the whole day to work with him. Not the whole day, but you know, a couple minutes. Then just ask him for one simple behavior, and then bam, there's your breakfast. Listening to me pays. Sometimes it pays the job, sometimes it pays a whole week's worth of the paycheck. But listening to me is always fun, is always a good thing. So, you train an animal that wants to listen and do things for you. Sometimes you don't have the food. So you give them the attention, and the love, and the play. But food is the easiest reinforcer. But play is also a fun reinforcer too. So you can always end your training sessions with some play. Again, for behavior like Laying down on your bed gets me to come over and play with you. Your fun little games. If you don't like him nibbling on you, have a toy nearby. But if he nibbles on me too hard, then I say, ow. And I get up and I stand up and I'm like, I'm done. But he doesn't. What you gonna do? Looking for more food? Looking for more food? Let's get you back on the bed. Let's get you back on the bed. How's your little puppy tooth? How's your puppy tooth doing? Your little piranha. The other thing in regards to grooming, you know, just as simple as play with the ears and then give them a treat. Play with the other ear and then give them a treat. Look at his paws. Separate them. 
geometry. Just like what we did in the bath, this will get him ready for ear inspections at the veterinarian, getting him ready for nail trims. And you just take his paw <laughs> and give him a treat while you look at each individual nail. And then later it'll be a treat after each paw, a treat after two paws. I'll have a dog that helps you with the nail trims.